Good morning, Mom. Dad. Good morning, sir. Would you like some scrambled eggs? Uh, no thanks. I've got to get going. You have an interview? Interview? Job interview? No. Why? Son, we need to talk. We really don't mean to get on your back about this, but it's been almost a year since you graduated from the university. Don't you think it's time to start looking for a job? I have a job. A job? You have a job. <sighs> looking for buried treasure with a metal detector is not a job, it's a hobby. The question is, at what point does a hobby become a business? Well, good question. In my mind, it becomes a business when you can actually make a living at it. I can. I mean, I could if I had to. Ha! Ha ha ha! I'm sorry, but I find that hard to believe. Would you like me to show you? Please! Please, please, show me, show me! 
Your mother and I have sacrificed for years to put you through college, and frankly, we would like to see what we paid for. Amazing. Mm. Your grandma would probably use this. <laughs> and this is only a small portion of what I found. I've been selling most of it on the internet. And you wouldn't believe how much people have been paying for this. As for these items, you're looking about $20,000 worth. $20,000? You gotta be kidding me. I can't dig it up fast enough. Everything sells. Everything. It doesn't seem to matter what shape it's in. If it looks old and it's covered with dirt, that's even better. It sells. You found all this with your metal detector. Yeah, I did. Oh, but don't get the impression that this is easy. You don't just start anywhere and find something. I do a lot of research. I look at old public records, maps, you know, that sort of thing. How do you know what to look for? You don't. It's all imagination. And lots of luck. You have to imagine where people used to be and buildings that are no longer there. This was all left behind. Someone either threw it away or lost it. This stuff could only talk. You're really into this, aren't you? It's wonderful. I couldn't be any happier. I thought you were going to be a history teacher. So did I. But I just stumbled into this when I was doing my thesis. And it completely changed my outlook on things. Do you mean to tell us that we sent you to school for all those years so you could dig holes for a living? Dad, can you imagine what it must have felt like to discover the Titanic? Or to find the bullet on Custer's battlefield? That's what I want to experience. The feeling of discovering the big one. Well, how does your friend Jimmy fit into all this? Well, it's Jimmy's last year in college. And he plans on being a teacher. To him, this is just for fun. But he's really good. He's majoring in anthropology, so, you know, sometimes he comes up with something that I completely missed. Well, when one of you finds something, who gets to keep it? Are you equal partners or what? <laughs> good question, Mom. Well, we each have a detector. And whatever he finds, he gets to keep. Whatever I find is mine. And that system works pretty fine. Oh yeah, the system works just fine to one of you find a box full of gold coins. Have you thought about that? No. That would be an interesting dilemma, wouldn't it? The professor is really happy with what we've turned up so far. We've got a paper trail on the Miller family dating back to 1831. And we're positive that the cabin is on that property. We just haven't found it yet. The original ranch was about 2,000 acres, but for whatever reason, no two documents have been the same. The property line kept shifting. One record book shows the property line in a certain spot, and another book shows the property line five miles away. That's really interesting. I wonder what would uh, make the line shift like that. We don't know that yet. We're still missing that piece of the puzzle. And what was Bobby saying about a new map or something? Bobby came up with an old surveyor's book that not only has the numbers, but a lot of personal notations that the surveyor wrote in the margins. Really interesting read. When can we expect you back? Tomorrow night. Bobby's bringing his camping gear. See you later, Dad. Bye, Mom. Goodbye, son. Be careful. Bye. We love you.
was wrapped up in a red bandana and there was this board on top of it, like a false bottom. So America didn't get all moldy. Actually the pouch was moldy. It looked so nasty that I almost tossed it out. But for some reason I opened it up and there was the book. Like it was calling out to me. Maybe it was the ghost of Levi Miller calling out to you. I never had any doubt. Okay, let's take the camping gear with us on the raft, and then wherever we end up, we'll just stop there for the night. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Okay, we need to pay close attention to the compass. The way these channels move back and forth,
outbreak of typhoid fever or scarlet fever or malaria. Maybe. Can you imagine the swamp before they started spraying the mosquitoes? You get eaten alive. I've read stories of men going completely insane from the constant buzzing of mosquitoes. You okay? I'm fine, but I've got this strange feeling like we're being watched. You're not gonna believe this. So do I. Have you seen anybody? No. Me neither. But I think I know why I'm so jumpy. Why? There's a notation at the bottom of page 209. It says E.M. Missy. Elizabeth Miller? Right. Levi Miller's wife. Well, I guess that being here, what actually happened, makes it seem more real. Like our spirit is watching us.
teacher's already pretty impressed with all the data we've collected on the Miller family. And now, with the information from that surveyor's log, I'll get an A for sure. Thanks to you. Especially if you actually find something this trip. What is it? That creepy feeling again. I gotta take a leak. Sorry, I did not mean to startle you. My name is Black Elk. You've been following us all day, haven't you? No, I have not laid eyes on you until this moment. I saw your light from across the water, and I came to investigate. Investigate what? Is there a problem? Simply to investigate who was on the island. So this is an island? Yes, of course. Don't you know where you are? Care to join us? Yes, thank you. This is government land, right? I mean, we're not trespassing or anything. May I ask why you are here? That depends. Who are you and why do you want to know? Fair enough. I am from the Watumbo tribe, and I am caretaker of this island. Oh, you are? Well, we happen to know that before this land was deeded over to the government, it was part of the Miller Ranch. Then you know what happened to the Millers. Not exactly. We're from the university. We're history majors. My name's Bobby Hanson. This is Jimmy Reed. Would you like my rum? You must be very honored and and proud to be the caretaker of this island. That's a very important job. Thank you for your kind words. You're very welcome. Would you like a little bit more rum? We got plenty. Don't mind if I do. You know, Black Elk, we've heard so many different versions of what happened to the Millers. Perhaps you could honor us with your version of, you know, what happened. My story is the only true story of what took place on this island. My grandfather told the story to my father, and my father told the story to me. May I? Long ago, before the white man came.
The elders of the tribe were deeply ashamed of this horrible thing that brought disgrace upon our people. You'll never read this story in any history book. Levi Miller placed the entire blame of the death of his family on his own shoulders. He was asked to take his family and leave, but he chose to stay. And it was his family, not himself, that suffered the horrible consequences. He never told a living soul what happened. So, uh, the great-grandfather was a medicine man? That's right. My great-grandfather, my grandfather, and my father. And you? Yes. I am a medicine man also, like my father. Here, help yourself. I better take a leave. Yeah, I've got to go too. Mm -hmm. Now we know for sure that Miller's cabin is here on the island. Yeah. But it's also a graveyard. Sacred ground. I don't think Black Elk is going to let us just poke holes in the ground. I don't know that I even want to. We're not grave robbers. Of course not. But remember that our metal detectors won't even read the graves. There's no metal. Okay, it's all bone. If we get a reading anywhere at all, it's gonna be where the cabin was. That makes sense. You're right. But what about Black Elk? You know that he's not gonna let us do it. I don't think we should even tell him. Let's break camp first thing in the morning and leave. Then, when we're sure that he can't see us, We'll double back and circle around to the other side of the island. That's a good idea. We better get back to camp before he comes looking for us. With that bottle of rum, he's not going anywhere. He's sleeping. I drink the whole bottle. Wake him up with a cannon. Maybe we should leave now while he's still passed out. Hmm. If by some miracle he happens to wake up and sees that we're gone, he'll know that something's up. And you know what? I think he'd come looking for us. And I think he'd find us too. So in the morning we'll just say goodbye and then hopefully he just goes away. And what if he does follow us? We just have to go home and come back some other time. I'm exhausted. I guess I'll sleep. Yeah, me too. It gets pretty damp when the fog starts to go in. 
It's a good way to catch the moment. Well, since we're camped in a graveyard, do you know any good ghost stories? I'm entertaining. You? Or the ghosts? That's a good one. I think he's dead. That would have been a great story last night, but not during the day. I'm not kidding, Bobby. He's dead. I hope we didn't kill him with that bottle of rum. Let's get one thing straight right now. We didn't hold him down and pour rum down his throat. In fact, he did a pretty good job at emptying that bottle all by himself. I don't mean that we actually killed him, but we did give him the whole bottle. That's a lot of rum. He could have died of alcohol poisoning. Maybe. Could have been a stroke or a heart attack too. Or maybe he just died. Yeah. Maybe he just died. But I just thought of something really weird. You want to hear it? Sure. Go ahead. Well, Black Elk just told us a tribal secret. About the massacre. And now Black Elk's dead. Like maybe his dead ancestors are pissed off that he told us. So they punished him. That's nonsense. Maybe so. But we are standing in the middle of a graveyard. And he's dead. That is spooky. The big question now is, what do we do with him? In what sense? Do we bury him? Do we call the police? Or do we just walk away like we were never here? We sure as hell don't want to bury him. Because if anyone ever finds him, it looks like murder for sure. On the other hand, this is an Indian cemetery, and he is an Indian. True, but I don't like that idea at all. I don't think it's a good idea. Hmm. I agree. I hope that we just walk away like we were never here. Sooner or later, someone's going to find them. What's left of him. And it'll look like he just came out here and, and died peacefully. What if we just go to the police and tell them the story? <laughs> yeah, we could do that. But at the very least, they're gonna, they're gonna ask us a million questions. They'll automatically assume there was foul play, and we might even be blamed for his death. Jimmy, we could end up in prison. I'm open just walking away, like we were never here. But before we go, we need to finish what we came here for. We're not coming back, that's for sure. I agree. 
I really don't think anyone's gonna show up and bother us. I think another couple of hours won't make any difference one way or the other. Let's get to it then. Where do you want to start from? You want to come around? Come from the other side? Uh, no. Let's go right through the middle. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Guess my math class will good for something after all.
this is amazing. Are you okay? Yeah. I hit something sharp, but I didn't cut myself. Well, you want me to do that one for you? No, I'll do it. Thanks anyway. No wonder it stuck me. It's a knife, look! Oh shit! What's wrong? Come over here! Look what I found. What is it? I hit a grave. Oh shit, it's right. I thought the detectors only find metal. That's right. There's metal in there somewhere. I don't care. Cover him up. Aren't you curious? No. We're not grave robbers. We're not robbing anything. We're investigating. It's all in the name of science. Think about your class paper. This is worth an eight for sure. And if we get caught, we're dead meat. That's Black Elk's job. And he's dead. Okay. Let's check it out. But what's the big deal? What do you think we'll find? A bullet? A bullet? That is intriguing. Well, if there is a bullet, there's a good possibility that this is Elizabeth Miller. Well, here goes.
You see? I told you. They're coming, they're coming to get us. They found Black Elk, and now they're coming to find us. Who's coming to find us? The tribe. The Indians. Didn't you say there was a curse for digging up the medicine man? Yeah. Well, supposedly a curse is like voodoo. It only works if you believe in it. Well, I don't believe in any curse. But I heard the drums anyway. But I told you about the curse. So it's working on your subconscious mind. Mine too, apparently. Are both missing. That's not imaginary. Okay, it's gone. And so is Black Elk. Well, that seems like a no-brainer. Black Elk wasn't really dead. He woke up and took the boat. But he was dead. Dead drunk, maybe. Dead men don't just get up and walk away. Well, this one did. Now we don't have a boat. Why would he take our boat? To keep us here? Why? Maybe we know too much. Listen. The drum stop. Jimmy. Look.
the trees. Come on. What's happening to us? Quicksand. Are you thinking what I'm thinking?
Holy shit. That was a close one. She saved us again. Black Elk, you're alive. Come with me. The drums have stopped. Where the hell did he go? He was right here. Where did the elk? I don't know what to believe anymore. What about Black Elk? He was real enough. Was he real? Where is he? What are you saying? This can't be Black Elk. We shared our bottle with him last night. Black Elk's spirit? He said that his job was to protect the dead. He did his job and now he's gone. I wonder why he didn't just kill us and get it over with. Or let the alligators spin. And if his spirit is in there, then he knew that. You know what else? Black Elk.
Do you hear anything? No. Me neither. Thank God. I thought it was starting all over again. The place where we camped last night should be just beyond those bushes over there. There were medicine men who helped their brothers with old wives' commands. Drums, leather, and feathers were their tribal treasures, displayed in ceremonies by their medicine men.
的。